Hello guys, welcome to PW Dragon's channel, and today we are going to be going over the basics of setting up and maintaining an axolotl aquarium. Now for those who don't know, axolotls are neotenic salamanders that are found in Mexico. Although not too commonly recently, they are thought to be very close to extinction. But luckily, there is an overabundance of them in captivity. And online I can see a lot of mistakes and issues with, uh, that people have with maintaining them in a habitat and keeping them healthy. Uh, and there's some very uh, key ones that I see repeatedly, so I thought it would be perfect to go over how to properly set up and maintain an aquarium today. So, we're going to start off with the substrate. Now, axolotls have a form of feeding called vacuum feeding. Now, this is commonly the way that most neotenic animals feed. So, what this means is that when they eat, they inhale everything that is around them uh, when they're targeting their, their prey. But this also means that they intake some of the things on the ground, which means if you have gravel, they will intake that, and that will become impacted in their stomach, causing harm and potentially killing the animal. So what you're going to do is, sorry, what you're going to want to do is come have a substrate that will not harm the animal. So this means sand will work perfectly, as well as bare bottom or large stones that are larger than the animal said, as well as slate. Slate works well because it uh, is similar to bare bottom, but it gives the animals something to grip on as they try to move around the aquarium. So these are just a few ones, but today we're going to set up the aquarium with sand. Now, when you're using gravel, or I mean, sorry, when you're using sand, it's important to make sure that the sand is washed out after you remove it from the bag, and so. So it doesn't have any dust or chemicals in it still from packaging. So when you put the sand in, you want to put in about an inch or so. This allows enough for you to put any plants or uh, decorations in, but not deep enough where it's going to trap dirt or harmful air bubbles that will eventually stagnate and harm the water. Axle bottles are very sensitive to the water quality, so it's important to constantly monitor and make sure that there isn't anything like ammonia in the tank. So evenly spread it out, and like I said, you're going to want about an inch of substrate in the aquarium. So the next step is going to be decorations and plants. Now you can have either live or fake plants in the aquarium. There are pros and cons to both. Now plastic plants, you don't have to worry about light food, water temperature, anything like that. So that is one of the things that is, uh, makes plastic plants attractive to uh, cold water salamander aquariums. So live plants are beneficial for the aquarium because they help filter out a lot of the food and dirt that falls down into the substrate that the animal doesn't eat or that the animal uh, puts back into the tank, uh, meaning waste, urine, sorts of things like that. They also produce oxygen. So this is good because, especially with axolotls, who use gills to breathe, oxygen is very key to the tank. So what you're going to do is place the larger plants. This is now placing the plants and decorations in the aquarium is specific to the person who's setting them up. Uh, these are just some that I some that I had sitting around the house. Uh, these will work perfectly. They provide hiding. So, which is the most important. Uh, this is one of the main reasons you want decorations in the aquarium is because. Axolotls are can be social, but they're also shy. So you want to want to put decorations in there to allow them to hide, but also leave enough space to allow the animal to move around the tank and hunt for food and things like that. So the next step after putting the plants in the aquarium is filtration. Now filtration is extremely important and keeping your animal healthy, especially axolotls who are larger and they eat a lot, which means they produce a lot of waste. So a filter that you can use, now this isn't an actual filter, it's just a basic, uh, just a, the empty shell of one that I don't use anymore, but it's just to give an example. So a hang-on filter, the only downside to this is axolotls are not uh, flowing water animals. They like to have still calm waters because they live in lakes in the wild, so any flowing will uh, harm their gills, so you're going to want to avoid that at all costs. That's why a submersible filter, sponge filter, or a canister filter will work. But I use this as an example. 
that you know what to do in case this is all you can get, because these are oftentimes the most cheap, the cheapest, as well as the easiest to come across. So when you put it in the tank, there you will notice there's a flow box that um, when the water exits, and this will be what will cause the most uh, flow and the biggest issues. So what you're to, going to want to do is put something to block this or have the water flow onto instead of directly flowing into the water, into the aquarium. Now this can be easily done with a shower, uh, shower sponge or a piece of cork bark or something like that. Any of those things will work perfectly, especially cork bark where you can cut out a small notch and attach it onto the intake uh, pipe on the filter. But this will work well. This is what I use. So this will just attach here. You can put a little clip up here so that when the water flows out, it lands on this and doesn't harm the axolotls. Also, these provide excellent egg-laying sites. I found that both these uh, axolotls and Spanish rib newts love to lay eggs on these more than anything else. So after you put in the filter, the next thing you're going to want to do is put in some sort of aeration. This is especially important if you don't have any live plants in the tank. Now, the, the air pump that I'm using today is just your basic uh, two-nozzle air pump that uh, you can find at your local fish store or anything like that. This is a little bit advanced, but you're, so any, any basic air pump will work. So, because axolotls are very sensitive to their temperature, you're going to want to keep the aquarium below 72 degrees, preferably in the 60s. 65, 68 works very well. But to make sure that you're keeping it in these temperatures, it's important to have a thermometer. Now, thermometers um, are easy to come across, cheap, and there is a variety of different variations of them. There's electronic, there's these, there's ones that sink and suction cup. It's up to you. This one is a one that suction cups right onto the front or side of your tank. Now, to avoid um, a distraction when somebody's looking into the tank, you I'm going to be putting it on the side. So just get the suction cup wet and stick it on, and it should stay. Or not. There it goes. Okay, so the next step is water, of course. Now, these are fully aquatic animals, so you're, you're going to want to fill the tank up most of the way. So <laughs> So the next and final step of setting up the aquarium is the light. Now lights are not as important when you're dealing with plastic plants, but when you're dealing with live plants, you want to make sure you have either plants that don't require strong lighting or a light that will work well. But the main thing is you don't want it to be heat producing, again, because axolotls are cold water animals. So this is just a simple aquarium hood. Now the, one, the downside of this is the fact that it will leave openings and spaces for the axolotls to escape. So I don't recommend it, but it's all I had standing by, so uh, typically what you're going to want to do is put a screen lid on that will cover the tank, and then a light bar that will set over the screen lid. But if you do have, this is all you have, make sure that any other openings are taped over or uh, filled with spray foam, but make sure you do this long before you ever put it in the tank, because it can be harmful to the animal. So once you turn on the light, you can notice things that you might want to change and adjust within the tank. You can do this afterwards by putting your hand in, make sure you wash your hands before and after. You can readjust sand, plants, however you like. Um, it's specific to what you are interested in. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope this helped. Leave a comment for other animals that you'd be interested in. Uh, in the future, I'm going to be doing a how-to video on crested newts. I have to have a quite a few species. I have marble newts, Danube Bay crested newts, as well as flavistic and head for flavistic, Italian crested newts, Alpine crested newts, and etc. So uh, leave a comment, hit that like button, and please subscribe because this is going to be hopefully the first of many. Thank you and goodbye.